Welcome to Witness Wednesdays here on the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. However, each Wednesday, I will have a guest give their witness of how God is working in their lives. Hearing how God is working in other people's lives shows us how deeply He cares for each one of us individually. Listening to these experiences will help your faith grow. I am so blessed to be able to share these with you. Let's get started. Today's witness is from my friend Bruce. Bruce reached out to me randomly back in November. He found my podcast and wanted to send in his testimony for Witness Wednesday. His testimony was about how he went to a healing service and regained his sight, and then lost it again when he woke up. I offered to pray with him, and he agreed. We have prayed together three times now. Bruce has not regained his sight, but something amazing happened each time we prayed together. You can find the testimony from the last two times we prayed together on the Witness Wednesday playlist on YouTube. You can also find them on whatever podcast app you're listening to right now. Today's Witness is about when Bruce and his lovely wife Alice came from Canada to visit Gloucester Mass, and my friend and I got to pray with them in person instead of over the phone. It was a great time, and I am so grateful the Lord brought Bruce, Alice, and me together. I know you will enjoy this witness as much as I enjoyed it. God is working in such miraculous ways. Here is the letter from Bruce. Dear Catherine, it is two months from today that we met with you and Nancy in Rockport. In the meantime, you have been in Scotland and back, and I have had a new experience, which I will tell you about. You may use it in your Witness Wednesday if you like. On July 23rd, my wife Alice and I had the pleasure of meeting with Catherine and her friend Nancy for lunch. This vacation had been planned well in advance before we met Catherine. It turned out that Nancy's home was just down the road from where we were staying. Sitting outside by the ocean, the four of us chatted and also prayed together for healing. There was no major change in my eyesight at that time, but I realized that the floaters and the shifting debris that I normally saw were gone. It felt like I had more life in my eyes just a feeling. This visit was a real blessing and encouragement for us before heading for home a couple of days later. For some time, I had been without any sight in my left eye and was able to see light and shadows in my right eye. After this recent change, my eye went completely dark, but the movement of floaters was gone. I couldn't tell the difference between day or night. I couldn't see if there were any lights on in the house. Things were the same whether my eyes were open or shut. I had to make an adjustment to this. I found the darkness heavy and depressing. I also felt spiritually let down and more isolated. I heard someone talking about God's light of the world and I thought, we often ask the Lord to shine his face upon us in the benediction. It was a Monday in August and I told the Lord how I felt. I wanted to somehow have more communication with him. I didn't want to be in the dark anymore. And would he please shine his light upon me? The next day, Tuesday, I listened to Catherine's podcast, which was about Jesus, the light of the world. This felt like my prayer was going somewhere, and I became vigilant. That night, I went to bed around 1 a.m. I was laying on my back in the dark. A small white light appeared in my headspace. It seemed to sparkle and began moving. It became brighter and larger and closer, shining with the brightness of lightning. I felt the light overtake me, and I put my face in the pillow. The light was still there, and I realized it was within me. It was beautiful and exciting. I began thanking and praising the Lord for this joyful experience. The light would move and pulse brighter than lower, going on for an hour and a half until I fell asleep. I wanted to wake Alice, but I didn't want to interrupt her sleep or the light. When I awoke in the morning, the light was gone. I figured that was a one-time experience. Later that morning, I began telling Alice about it. I stopped and said, It's happening again right now. There was this arch of brilliant white light before me, beautiful as ever. It stayed with me for a couple of hours, going and coming into the night. This continued daily, much to my joy. 
I noticed whenever I sat at the table, it would appear. Whenever I listened to my audio Bible, or even thought about the Lord or scriptural matters, it would appear. I found myself talking with the Lord in this light. If I was praying, it would appear. It was always with me when I went to sleep. I soon realized I could call on it by asking it to appear. I was quite amazed by the way all this happened, by the communication which took place, and the overwhelming feeling of God's love. There was nothing to do but simply enjoy the moment with the Lord and His light. As I write this, the Lord still shines His light upon me every day and every night. This has been an unexpected and thrilling blessing for me, far better than I hoped for. I can't help but feel this is leading me to somewhere good. My hope and faith has never been more confident than it is now. It is so easy for me to trust the Lord to love me and walk me wherever He wants to take me. He really is my guiding light. I have in the past had encounters with Jesus, which have been marvelous, but this encounter in His light seems to never end. How wonderful is this! It lifts my heart to look back and see how God works in our lives. Alice and I had planned our trip to Gloucester long before we knew Catherine. Her podcast came out of the blue one night on my Google Home and caught my attention. Her faithfulness and prayer support is so appreciated. Through Catherine and the prayer group she attends, I have also met Nancy and talked with Robert and learned that they have all prayed for me. These friends in prayer and support have inspired me and I am privileged to know them. My visit in July was meant to be some sort of breakthrough. That's what I had prayed for. As often is the case, I felt things didn't go as I had hoped. As it turned out, I received a blessing I never expected, along with a newfound faith and hope. A few years ago, I heard a story told by an Anglican minister in England. He was known for his healing ministry. He told the story of a woman who had lost her sight in both eyes. The woman related how she started seeing a white light. The light would come and go from time to time and would vary in intensity. She said this went on for some time. One day, she heard about the special healing ministry near her. The light continued to be with her. She made her way to the healing service in Blackpool. After preaching the gospel, the minister invited people to come forward for healing prayer. Many people went forward, and she waited in her seat where she was healed. I thank the Lord every time I see his light. I thank the Lord for my friends in Massachusetts. May the Lord bless you, Catherine, and your ministry. Bruce and Alice. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us and for allowing me to share on Witness Wednesday. I know your story will give hope to so many others who are also waiting for some pretty big answers to some pretty big prayers. Your faithfulness will help them trust in the Lord more. Thank you again for sharing, and we can't wait to hear your testimony when your sight is fully restored for good this time. We have all seen God working in our lives. However, we might not all be aware it is God working in our lives. This is why it's so important we start talking about it more. The more we share our experience, the more people will understand how God works and how much He truly loves us. If you would be willing to share any experience you've had of how God has worked or is working in your life, please email me at katherine at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. And that's C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. Or just click on the link below. It won't take up much of your time, and your story could be just the story that someone needs to hear today. Prayerfully consider sharing. Everyone has a story, and the world needs to hear them. I look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow, and I will have another witness for you next Wednesday. Have a blessed day!